has to be one of the most creative rock guitar players of all time. He's had a very successful and interesting career. But if we rewind for a moment back to 1984, In 1984 was the year his first solo album was released that shook the rock guitar playing world. Now this album is full of raw energy, crazy use of the whammy bar, flawless technique, and all these exotic sounds, you know, I'd never heard anything like it before. He was just off the back of his experience with uh, Frank Zappa and about to go into the unknown, which obviously turned out to be playing with uh, Alcatraz, David Lee Roth, Whitesnake, and, you know, then embarking on a brilliant solo career. You could hear influences in there, such as Jimi Hendrix, Eddie Van Halen, and there's probably other influences too, but the Frank Zampa influence is very noticeable. Fi recorded and toured with Frank Zappa between 1980 and 82 and appeared on several of Zappa's albums throughout the 80s playing these very complicated guitar parts. He was often credited by Zappa as the stunt guitarist or impossible guitar parts played by. I always marveled at how Steve Vai managed to play these parts. It's an amazing feat. Zappa was notorious for writing very difficult instrument parts for his musicians, and um, Mogio is no exception. Mogio was originally released on uh, the 1983 album The Man from Utopia. Well, this is the story of a man who lived in Utopia. A while back I did a video on uh, Sinister Footwear 2 and how to navigate the uh, difficult guitar parts in that piece. I'm going to do a similar thing here with Mogio and uh, just run through some of the challenges and, and some of the ways you can get around the technicalities of it. If you are going to play it, you need a lot of patience and perseverance and there are going to be moments where you're going to be pulling your hair out. It is really, really challenging, but good fun too. That's what it's about. It's fun. It's challenging yourself and putting yourself in a new musical situation and developing your technique. Okay, so number one is to make sure that your right hand is as relaxed as can be. There will be elements of tension when you're doing the string skips, but it's imperative that you keep your hands relaxed. That's probably one of the things that takes a while. You're gonna find yourself tensing up in certain points, but the more you tense up, the more you're gonna make mistakes. The first really difficult part for me was at bar 32. Part of the phrase you have this leap, a major seventh leap. You've got B, G, and then the C. If I do it, that feels more natural rolling with the second finger, but when I go to the C, it just feels like a sort of stretch there. It just doesn't feel right. So if I do it with my third finger, I'm already you know, it's a comfortable sort of shift from the G to the C. Now this was the bit that caused me a lot of problems. And the first time I played it like this. But I found the next phrase. If you do it that way, my first finger is on this C sharp and then I have to jump to that G, which is not going to happen at that tempo. It's just too fast to make that shift. So that didn't work. Uh, I tried this. But 
that shift from the third finger on the F sharp to the B flat A G, it wasn't working out either. So in the end I settled on purely for the fact that it's only two strings. If you look at this one, the first uh, example, you're playing across three strings here. Um, it's just these two strings, so it's, there's less movement in the right hand. Now the other bit that's quite difficult is the D flat minor section. fingering is, uh, is a bit unusual. This leap from the D flat down to the E, the flat third, and then this. But this one, this one was really difficult because the hand is shifting. Shifts down, up for that, and then down for this. The next part of the phrase goes up to this G sharp and then descends. You have this uh, major seventh leap, it really interrupts the flow. <laughs> I really wanted to do that. It would make life easier, but that major seventh leap is in the score, and that's what the composer wanted, and that's what you have to play. Originally I had played this part here. Uh, I realized for some reason it was slowing me down when I found out it was this. It kind of held me up a little bit, so I figured, well, maybe there's a, another way I could play it. And I found this, this way of doing it. There's one thing I've noticed, that when you move um, the shape from one position to another because you're trying to you know, find the easiest solution to the problem, you found a solution to one problem, you then encountered another problem that wasn't existing in the first pattern that you played. For example, now from that A to the B, there's a minus seven leap there. It's it's easier to play it here than down here. Just the nature of the way I'm playing it here. I land on that A with my first finger and the next note is the minus seventh leap down to the B. There is no way I'm gonna to get to that in time at that speed. So it just so happens that in the score, the next note is the B, and I happen to have an open B that I'm taking advantage of here. If it was a C, then I would probably have to play it up here. Because I wouldn't be able to get... But it's a B. So I can do that. So this is one of the secrets, is that you have to be thinking ahead. This is why, again, I marvel at these guys who played this stuff live when they were playing in Zappa's band, is you just have to have so much concentration. You have to be thinking ahead, but not too far ahead that you stuff up what you're playing in the present. You have to see the pattern, the shape in your head before you actually play it, and that really helps in getting the precision and the accuracy. If you're just winging it, it's, it's just not going to happen. So that's a very important thing to consider when you're playing this, is to always think a little bit ahead. What's coming up next? What shape do I have to uh, get ready for? Uh, and it does actually help a lot. Now the other section that's quite interesting is the C sharp 7, sharp 11, sharp 9 that goes down to the C7 sharp 11. 
C sharp 7 sharp 11 sharp 9 <laughs> a lot of sharps down to the C 7 sharp 11 now in the melody that's really what's happening the emphasis is on the uh, sharp 11 in each case but the way he decorates it melodically is just fascinating um, and it's typical Zappa you know just taking a collection of notes but just sort of uh, recycling them and varying them and you know displacing them by octaves and reversing them changing the order of the notes is something he does a lot of kind of transitory points between the chords. Uh, you have um, and then and really cool little transitions there. listen to Mogio you notice that there aren't any chords. The only clues about the harmony are in the bass, the melody and the accompanying keyboards and synthesizers. In the chart you have the chords uh, titled as Mystery Studio Song Number One. So I'm going to play some of the chords with uh, the melody uh, just out of interest just to see what it sounds like with the harmony underneath. at about 48 seconds there seems to be a discrepancy between the implied harmony and the bass line it happens specifically at bar 43 B minor over E D major 7th over E and F major 9 and G major 9 these are the chords that support the main melody of the piece however bar 43 when we get to the F major 9 there's an F sharp in the bass an F sharp root note against the F major 9 that the F sharp is against the F major 9 it sounds out within the context of how the bass line is played in all the other chords that support the main melody so it may be just a, a discrepancy there but I just wanted to point that out because I was playing along to it and I was like oh something's not right here the way I'm playing this guitar part is um, I guess it's comfortable for me I don't know if if Steve I played it this way, uh, yeah, maybe he played it in different positions, but it's not, I'm not saying that this is exactly how Steve I played it. On the contrary, this is just one way of playing it. And as you, as you can see from what I've demonstrated, there are a number of ways you can play the same thing. 